So I've decided today that I'm going to show you the ins and outs of how to create a totally legitimate 100% perfectly ethical restaurant in RimWorld. My goal is to hopefully inspire you to become restaurant entrepreneurs yourself and that's why today I'm going to let you in on a few trade secrets of mine. From how to ethically source your food to how to handle disgruntled employees. No, no, no. But above all, the art of being able to utilize 100% of the human body for profit. We crash landed down in the middle of this small collection of hills and immediately set off to lay down the foundations of our base. My big plan here was to split my resort in two via this ancient highway. On the left will be where all my dirty, disgusting employees will reside, while on the right will be where we build our restaurant and hotel. I had also selected a location near multiple other factions, as I was hoping to send them some of my shit in return for improved relations a little later on down the line. To achieve my goal, I've acquired three men with an array of unique backgrounds that should hopefully carry us to victory. We have the cook, whose one goal will be to maintain our food production, Travis, a hired thug and construction worker, and Loser, a former streamer who was renowned for his monkey impressions, a perfect candidate for our entertainment department. For now though, I put Loser to work researching crude torture methods from the War Crimes Expanded mod, which Loser then took his newly acquired knowledge and applied it to a grizzly bear. Oh, you fucking idiot. Oh, you just stabbed the bear in the head. I mean, I tried to save it from an infection. I, I, I generally tried to do the right thing here. It just kind of ended with... The reason for heading down the War Crimes Expanded Tree was so I could work my way down towards questionable food production, which allows me to increase our yield per person at the expense of, well, them. But until then, we unfortunately were going to have to rely on more ethical means of acquiring our food. Nice. With the basics down, it was time to enact a policy of mass deforestation so that we could begin the construction of our hotel and begin luring guests over. The plan then is once they arrive, we'll hopefully bait them into my restaurant and then serve them a mixture of humanely sourced and human sourced food. Speaking of which... The first raider we humanely killed with a bullet to the skull. I know, I know, I would feel the same if I was told that I was going to be someone's meal. And the second we shot her in the lung, removed her gas mask, and then proceeded to enact a kind of moral justice by throwing her own toxic grenades at her until she died. Look, she was planning on committing a war crime on me, I just beat her to it. We then butchered their remains and threw the meat into this nutrient paste grinder to create a disturbing concoction of bear berries, mushrooms, bear meat, human meat, hair meat, granny smith apples, raccoon meat, berries, raspberry squirrel meat, and rice, which I planned to offer out as free samples to our guests while our restaurant was still being constructed. And wouldn't you know, the next day, someone arrived. Oh, oh, oh! However, we did have a slight problem. You whore! You decrepit human being you son of a bitch how dare you bring your own food you're not allowed to do that that's against the rules yeah it turns out guests can bring their own food which really wasn't part of my plan but that's fine i thought this group of tribals surely won't have any of their own food it was at this point i began asking some hard questions like why don't people want my free food well turns out one of the reasons may have been because um it wasn't actually free in fact, it costs half the amount of the luxurious bedrooms we are offering, so we upped the prices of the bedrooms to balance this out. This, however, actually worked. In fact, I made a single sale of nutrient paste, and that gave me the motivation to finally begin the construction of our restaurant. The construction of our restaurant was a hard and tedious job for the refugees that I had welcomed in. I offered them a home in return for their labor, which I thought was a very fair exchange. After all their hard work, we decided to christen the restaurant by hosting an orgy before sending Cook out to prepare our first dish. A fine meal made out of a raider that decided to bring a club to a blunderbuss fight <laughs> served with rice. Now armed with a stockpile of food, we now needed some guests. So I researched microelectronics and placed down a comms console and began to throw out invites to all the nearby factions. But let's just say my first couple of invitations didn't go so well. I promised the Empire safety from some Vikings that I had completely forgotten had a trade caravan parked outside my base. Oh, come on. Yeah, it turns out uh, maybe we couldn't assure safety. Yeah, sorry about that. I then invited a bunch of naked tribals for a stay who turned up to my hotel during a cold snap and all proceeded to get frostbite and die. Yeah, I think that's uh, very understandable. <laughs> but it's fine because about an hour later, 
Something magical happened. Oh my god. Oh my god, we have a customer. Holy crap. Loser, get over there immediately. Start taking her order. What does she want? Does she want some succulent nutrient paste or a fine meal? <gasps> she wants a fine meal. Ah! Ah! She's going to eat my she's going to eat my long pork. <laughs> yes, of course, madam. Enjoy your meal, please. That'll be $11. <laughs> she's actually eating it. We got minus 12 from cannibalism. She kind of figured out we were serving her human meat. But we've done it, ladies and gentlemen. We have served one person our dodgy food. And with that, I'd like to say we officially made it. We had served someone human meat. But before I had time to celebrate, uh, our restaurant went from looking like this uh, to this. Actually serving some stir fry as well. Hell yeah. God damn, son. Look at all these people in my restaurant. Oh, fuck yeah. Hmm. Travelers hope for eight. They want 32 herbal medicine. Well, in the nicest way possible. Uh... <laughs> Holy crap. There's so many guests just turned up. Yeah, I call this one the homeless man with a side of the herbal medicine he was begging for. Yeah, at this point, I think we can officially say we made it. We've made it, everybody. We've made it. Yeah, I think we can all agree things were going well. We had expanded the hotel to accommodate more people. We had a couple of thousand silver in the bank now, and we were making an average of 50 silver a day from the restaurant. However, I did have a very come to Jesus kind of moment when one of the visitors rocked up to my hotel, paid for their bedroom, decided to look into my brand new telescope I just installed, and then died. Uh, did that one just die? Turns out he died of chronic kidney disease, but before I had time to react and inform his friends, the cook was already dragging his corpse away, which he then butchered, let one of the guests cook, and then served to his friends the next morning. Yeah, I hope you enjoy your uh, former friend. What, what, what does he taste like? The problem I had now was I was a little too successful. Alongside every guest leaving with 100% positive vibes, I also upped the number of guests that arrived at a time. This led to my advisor informing me that Our food stocks are dwindling, my liege. Even though I was serving a wide range of food, people kept ordering my human meat stir fry and fine meals. And my problem wasn't that I was running out of basic food. I was running out of human meat. So I put together a devious little plan to maximize the potential of the human body. Remember earlier when I said I was working towards questionable food production? Well, with that researched, I was now able to produce growth simulators, which essentially thickens the human body for a higher yield of meat at the expense of, well, nothing really that's important to us. So I created this questionable looking structure, researched non-lethal weapons so I could make some dart rifles, and headed off to this nearby hunter camp so I could hunt some prey. And after a couple of tranquilizer darts, all you gotta do, boys, is hit one of them with one of those darts. <laughs> I had successfully caught myself a couple of test subjects. All we had to do now was bring them home, fail five fucking times in a row in planting these growth simulators, before finally being able to sit back and watch the grass grow. For the next couple of cycles, we sat back and observed as our subject grew meatier, until he finally died and I was able to butcher him for a whopping 197 meat, which translates to just under 20 fine mils. Which, you know, I wasn't really sure was entirely worth it, but I still expanded this operation for science. So once again, I headed out, shot a bunch of people with trank darts and brought them home. However, I then ran into a slight problem as turns out feeding six prisoners and running a restaurant was a little bit of a challenge for loser. So I thought I'd casually hook up this nutrient paste tap to the prison, which would allow the prisoners to feed themselves from my large stockpile of paste. And let's just say that caused a few issues. Hmm. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha. Uh-oh. Oh, now the... People are beating each other up. After a string of rebellions and premature deaths of my prisoners, I kind of came to the conclusion that this was a veiled business venture and pulled the plug on the project before it got out of hand by doing the humane thing and butchering the remaining subjects and then just pretending this never happened. With the failure of the farm, I was now looking for another way to expand our profit margins, which didn't involve breaking multiple pages of the Geneva Convention. And after a little bit of Googling, I came up with a brilliant idea. In the top left corner of my base, some of you may have noticed a large amount of fecal sludge festering next to my wood burners. I'd been collecting this since the day I landed from both my colonists and the unsuspecting guests who 
thought I was just offering bathroom facilities. Little did they know, I was holding their fecal matter with the intention to sell it back to them in the form of alcohol. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Chemshine, an alcoholic drink that is made from chem fuel and turns the user into a walking bomb. Now, how this little plot of mine will work is you can turn fecal sludge into chem fuel. Now, from here, most normal people either use it as a source of unlimited power or they jettify it and use it in a flamethrower. We, however, were going to create a brewery hidden away from the public eye. So I set off mining the inside of this mountain, cutting down another 100 trees for fermenting barrels, and employed someone the tasteful job of converting all this stale, warm shit into chem fuel. Cook then loaded the barrels up, and after just five days of fermenting, we had our first samples of chemshine, which I eagerly loaded up into transport pods and fired at our neighbors, who were, let's say, incredibly delighted to receive our gifts of alcoholic feces. The following day, they arrived in large numbers to buy more chemshine in both my restaurant. That's not even that bad. It's only made from people's feces and I can charge $5 for it. And my brand new gift shop, which also sold products like Slave Who Was Mauled By A Cougar In A Can. I feel like I should have put the Trank Dart in the Cougar. Oh my God. Oh my God. I mean, you kind of brought that one upon yourself. And t-shirts made from the abundant amount of human leather which I had lying around. And thanks to being allied with a majority of the factions, this meant they brought a large chunk of silver with them for each visit. This was great because I had created an endless cycle of free money. As they would arrive, pay for a room, dine at my restaurant, buy a bottle of chemshine from my gift shop, and then shit in my toilet, which we then recycled into more chemshine. And as long as no one just randomly decides to die inside my restaurant. Oh, you motherfucker. Yeah, so I hope you learned something from this video. Uh, basically, uh, go out there and be somebody and start your own restaurant. As always, a big thank you to all my Patreons for funding my stupid endeavors. And thank you for watching. And, uh, uh rat.